I'm Dan Lynch, and this is a look back in time. One of the most significant figures in American history began life as a boy who was fascinated with speed. No, I don't mean Evil Knievel or Mario Andretti. We're talking about a young man whose fascination with speed made him one of the great pioneers of human flight. And it all began right here behind me on this lake. Glenn Hammond Curtis was born in Hammondsport, New York in 1878. Early on he became fascinated with bicycles, with how fast he could get them to go up and down the mountain roads that surrounded his hometown. As a young man he married a woman named Lena Neff and opened a bicycle shop in Hammondsport. Pretty soon he discovered that if you attach an internal combustion engine to a bicycle, you could get the thing to go pretty damn fast. It wasn't long before Curtis was manufacturing motorcycles and racing them and getting them to move faster than anybody had ever gotten a motorcycle to go. In 1903 he set a motorcycle land speed record at 64 miles an hour. Four years later Curtis set a new world record of nearly 137 miles an hour on a motorcycle. He was, according to the press of the day, the fastest man in the world. But that wasn't quite enough for Glenn Curtis. Before too long, in 1908, Curtis had joined the Aerial Experiment Association. That was a pioneering research group founded by the inventor of the telephone, Alexander Graham Bell. Its purpose? To build flying machines. Wilbur and Orville Wright had also started out with a bicycle shop. They'd already flown an aircraft 852 feet at Kitty Hawk in 1903, but with no spectators. Curtis, on July 4th, 1908, flew nearly a mile in his seaplane, the June Bug, from the waters of Cuca Lake as a crowd looked on amazed from the beach in Hammondsport. The Curtis effort was the world's first officially witnessed flight. And that was just the beginning of it. Curtis won a race at the world's first international air meet in France. He made the first long-distance flight in America from Albany to New York City. He created the Curtis Aeroplane and Motor Company. His company built aircraft for the U.S. Army and Navy. And during the years leading up to World War I, his experiments with seaplanes led to sweeping advances in naval aviation. Curtis civil and military aircraft were predominant well into the World War II era. Glenn Curtis became rich and famous to a degree that he never dreamed of. The fictional character Tom Swift, who first appeared in 1910 in Tom Swift and his motorcycle and Tom Swift and his airship, was based on Glenn Curtis. Tom Swift was as famous in his time as Harry Potter is in this era. The Tom Swift books were set in a small town on a big lake in upstate New York. As World War I raged in Europe, when as American politicians figured out that the United States would be dragged into it, the U.S. Army Air Corps ordered the development of a simple, easy-to-fly, two-seat aircraft trainer. Curtis created the JN-4 Jenny for the Army and the N-9 seaplane version for the Navy. Thousands were sold to the military of the United States, Canada, and Britain. Curtis and the Wright brothers battled fiercely for business and patents, and ultimately their companies merged, creating the Curtis Wright Company. By then, Curtis had moved to Florida, where he founded 18 corporations and expanded into real estate development. While still active in the aircraft industry, he helped establish the cities of Hialeah and Miami Springs and Opelika. He built a lavish mansion there, far from bucolic Hammondsport, and created the world's first recreational vehicle trailer to facilitate his passion for hunting in the Everglades. At age 52, he suffered an attack of appendicitis in a Buffalo courtroom while he was engaged in a business lawsuit. 
He had surgery, but appendicitis was a serious business in those days, and Glenn Curtis died. Curtis is buried in Hammondsport, not far from the lake he loved, and not far from where he and the June Bug made aviation history. In the end, Glenn Hammond Curtis moved through life pretty much at light speed, leaving a big wake in his path and making a positive difference as one of the world's foremost pioneers of flight. Thank you.